Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Today we're in Mark chapter 15, verses 27 through 32, which reads, With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking among themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. That's Mark chapter 15, verses 27 through 32. Today we return to our study of Mark chapter 15. In today's passage, the narrative shifts, highlighting the abandonment of the Lord Jesus when he hung on the cross. The characters in the drama of the crucifixion were oblivious to the higher drama that was being played out. As we read Mark's narrative, we learn of the unfolding of God's view of sin. In fact, it was God's view of sin that required the Lord Jesus to die on the behalf of sinful man. In verses 27 and 28 of today's passage, we read, With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And he was numbered with the transgressors. The word translated robbers can also be translated rebels. These guys who hung on either side of the Lord Jesus were most likely friends of Barabbas, who was himself a robber. The Lord Jesus died the death of a rebel on behalf of rebels. The two criminals who were crucified next to the Lord Jesus provide for us the study of the ages. Those two men were equally close to the Lord Jesus. One was saved and the other was lost. One went to heaven while the other went to hell. Both just as close, same opportunity, forever separated. One in glory, one in eternal punishment. The Lord Jesus is the dividing line between death and life, heaven and hell. And what makes the difference is the choice we make regarding him. One choice results in a hard heart, and the other results in a soft heart. The Lord Jesus did everything for both of these men, but only one received the free gift of eternal life. That's the whole idea of Christianity. We do not get into heaven by being reformed. We get into heaven through the death of the Lord Jesus who paid the price required by God in order to make it possible for all who would believe in the Son and his work on the cross to enter into heaven. The prophecy found in Isaiah 53 in verse 12, and he was numbered with the transgressors, was fulfilled as the Lord Jesus hung on his cross. Think of the possibilities of arranging this. And if the religious leaders had known their Bibles, well, they might have tried to prevent his crucifixion. But they did not. Interestingly, the Lord Jesus fulfilled over 100 Old Testament prophecies when he was crucified. In verses 29 and 30 of today's passage, we read, And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Had the Lord Jesus not died the way he died, we would have no hope for eternity. The Romans and the Jews hurled their abuses at the Lord Jesus, but he never once responded. 
He never once defended himself. Instead, he hung on the cross. He absorbed all of the abuses. He heard the taunts, not just with his ears, but with his soul. Everything screamed for the Lord Jesus to come down from the cross. His friends had abandoned him. The Romans were killing him. And his countrymen were mocking him. In the middle of all of this, the Lord Jesus listened hard for the voice of God. And he followed to this God-forsaken place. This place where even God seemed strangely absent and silent. In context, this foreign voice speaks. Come down. Think of when you've heard that voice threatening your identity. It demands that you prove your value. This is what the Lord Jesus was dealing with while he hung on his cross. But his identity was firmly rooted in his father's love for him. He had heard those words. This is my beloved son in whom... I am well pleased. The identity that the Father had given him is what motivated and moved the Lord Jesus. In verses 31 and 32 of today's passage, we read, Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking among themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. The religious leaders wanted the Lord Jesus to come down from the cross so that they allegedly might believe in him. But their presentation is not the way faith works. We don't see and then believe. No, biblical faith is believing before seeing. What those religious leaders did not understand, if he had come down, their faith in him would have been meaningless, assuming that they would have placed their faith in him, which I doubt they would have. Of course, it is very questionable that their statement about believing in him was authentic. After all, he had given them so much truth in his teaching and so many miracles Had he performed one more miracle, would not have made a difference. The Lord Jesus resisted the temptation to come down from that cross so that you and I would not be resisted by God. He stayed on that cross so that you and I would arrive upon the meaning of God regarding everything in our lives. He hung there, suspended between heaven and earth, so that you and I could transcend to the realm that it had abandoned him. He was abandoned so that we would not be abandoned. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, Have a great day.